No? Okay. In that, which, in that case, I'm going to relinquish control to uh, Brent. Uh, I put my trust in your hands and uh, let you go ahead. Hi, how's the screen sharing? Good, Brent. All right. Hi, everyone. And um, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about my project. And um, so first of all, my name is Brent, and I'm here representing my group members, Aftab, Amanda, and Nadi. And um, they're currently under co-op, so I'm the only one doing this presentation. Um, so what we did was for um, St. Joseph's Health Hamilton, and um, it is a portable towel dispenser for be uh, bathing bedridden patients. So um, they've identified the needs that um, they would need to upgrade their bed bathing procedure because currently they use a basket and, I mean, basin and washcloth to um, wet the towels first and then just clean the patient's body. And that leads to a lot of discomfort and inefficiencies. So um, our goal is to develop a portable towel dispenser to um, mitigate that issue. So uh, with the introduction here, uh, we identified the need to reimagine the bed bathing experience, and then uh, we're gonna go through some design solutions and then move on to the research and development part. So firstly, in the discover phase, um, we conducted interviews with the nurses at St. Joe's and um, additionally, some professors at Mohawk College, uh, we learned about the bathing procedures, what some of the issues are and what they like to improve on. So like, for example, here, it's like um, waiting for water to have to heat up takes a lot of time. And when it adds up to um, 30 something procedures per day, it is very inefficient for the entire unit. And then um, Running out of towels will make the entire process even more difficult. So yeah, that's another thing because uh, we um, we learned from this feedback that we'll need to have additional storage for towels so they don't need to go back to the station after every procedure. And um, here is a walkthrough of the current procedure. And um, it's just as you might imagine, it's a, bas um, it's a basin and some, uh, some washcloth and it caused a lot of discomfort. Oh, by the way, this slide is for our final presentation, so I'm just trying to go through that very quickly. And then uh, research findings. We found some of the dispensers from a Korean manufacturer, and um, we also learned that we are primarily dealing with patients with dementia inside of this care unit, so we made additional changes and additional features uh, specifically tailored to their needs, such as music to calm them down for the potential aggression that they might um, they might basically um, react on the nurses when they're agitated. And then mold and bacteria and then existing devices, things like that. And then experiment findings, we learned that the hospital towels would be able to take on enough water that if you have a stack of towels, for example, 10, and you're pouring water on top of it, they would um, equally distribute the water among the towels. So that would be our approach from then on. Anyway, we also tried to use steam and shower head. And then in the defined stage, we got to um, interview research and, and experiments, uh, essentially go through the whole prototyping phase. And then in the opportunity part is that the, um, we learned that communication between patients with dementia and the care providers can potentially lead to a lot of discomfort and um, basically cause a lot of issues that should not be there in the first place. And then, uh, oh, another big one is the nurse's time management because it um, doesn't matter how confident they are with their process, it would be, um, it would be basically impossible to pays out an entire day of procedures because there are a lot of uncertainties. And then um, in the development phases, we first went through the brainstorming and then um, asked us a bunch of questions. Uh, you'll learn that down the line from design thinking. 
it's my favorite part at least. And then uh, prototyping, there will be, um, yeah, this is the first one we ever got. It's quite exciting. Um, it's basically a very simple uh, solution with like different tanks. So it's like an upgraded version of the current procedure, um, as easy as it gets basically. And then the second one, it looks like a bunny, right? Uh, sort of. Um, so it is a more automated device that essentially prints out the towels, kind of like a printer. <laughs> um, it is complicated, but um, it also has that little bit of steampunky vibe to it, which I really like. And then the third one, hey, this is, uh, if you like Disney movie or Pixar movies, this kind of looks like a Wall-E. So this is our code name for it, actually. And um, it has a, um, like the head physically moves up and down. So uh, you have an extra counter space, which we learned from the interviews that it's, um, that it's quite, um, limited in terms of extra working space inside of a patient unit. Um, and then next, this is like a airline service cart and it has everything inside. It's very compact and there's enough storage for any things. And then we learned that we need a pump because of it. Um, I mean, as well as the previous designs, we'll need a pump to move the water around. So uh, next stage, we did experiments with water flow and how the water distribute and all of that, a ton of calculations, of course. Um, and the final iteration, it's this gravity assistive flow uh, from a water reservoir up high, and then you, um, and then the water will flow into like this chamber, and then the lid will have different um, heating elements and water distribution inside. And then when you press it against the towels, it will let out a set amount of water. And then you will be able to have a stack of towels ready for the next procedure. Um, and then in the bottom, there is a ton of storage. So um, in case you need to clean up after a meal or the patients have some protein spill or things like that, there is a ton of supply under the cart. So the hospital staff would not need to push different carts around. And then, uh, oh yeah, here's another look. It's it's kind of 1970s and um, yeah, this is actually my hand sketch. I added the, um, the giant bars at the side. So when you're navigating tight turns inside of the hospital, it's a lot easier. Uh, so yeah, this is when we ran into an issue towards the end of the um, project because we learned from our final feedback session that the device actually cannot enter the patient rooms. So um, it's a part of our miscommunication that um, was planted at the beginning of the project sort of. So um, yeah, we made a ton of final changes for our final pro uh, presentation and essentially made this card a lot more mobile than it can be in a different way and mitigated that issue as well. So um, further experiments down the line, we'll need to figure out if a closed leg containers for towel transportation is feasible, and then try to figure out if the towels can um, maintain their temperature essentially after this lid just open and close all the time. And then, um, and then we also want to try to look into a customized um, heat retaining chamber essentially for all of the hot water. So we can figure out if we need to have a heating element inside at all. Um, yeah, so this is the final design. It, um, it's a combination of both of the final sketches. And um, here is, oh, sorry. And then like all of the essential elements I've already talked about. Mm. And this is a storyboard of the final um, user experience. And um, you'll learn more about that in the classes. All right, so in conclusion, um, <laughs> yeah, so observational research at the hospital is crucial to the, uh, discover deeper, uh, sorry, discover deeper needs, <laughs> sorry. And um, yeah, this is coming from our biggest learning during quarantine, I feel like, because um, it did cause a lot of issues for us, especially at the beginning, but um, we powered through and it's sort of a miracle that all of us work so well together, including um, everyone in the nursing team and Professor Fleissig for helping us a lot. And um, yeah, the patient profile and control over temperature and moisturizing are critical elements in the towel dispenser design. 
and that would be mitigated in the next phase. And then music can also help with um, basically soothing down their potential aggression during a procedure. So yeah, and here are the next steps that's gonna happen uh, for the next team. And then, yeah, I'm done with my presentation of my design. And then um, next, uh, someone told me to talk about design thinking and human-centered design insights and all of that. So firstly, uh, the term insights, it is really hard to grasp. <laughs> Uh, for me, at the beginning, it definitely took me a few weeks and a lot of reworks. Just me sitting with my teammates on Zoom, more than six feet apart, being like, oh, that's not how it is. That's not how it is. You're doing it wrong and things like that. Uh, I think I did it probably more than 20 times when I'm trying to identify something. Like For me, it's personally frustrating. And then when you get there, you get it. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a really interesting thing to go through, personally. And then um, the design thinking and human-centered design process you learn during classes. From my experience working on this project, it is not as linear as I was expecting that. And then also expect a lot of rework. <laughs> and then um, embrace the frustration because there are a ton of times that I'm just sitting there like, okay, are we done? Like this meeting doesn't need to be two and a half hours long, but it is. Um, I uh, And then at the end of this, something sparks. And I feel like, you know, when you try to design something and you ask, ask yourself like this question, like, how did I get here? And then you have a eureka moment. It happens a lot to me after I learned human-centered design and design thinking. And I feel like I'm really thankful for this process. And then, um, of course, even for me, it took forever to learn what an insight is and everything else. Um, so when you're doing designs or practice or, and all of that with other people that might not necessarily know what it is, communicate very clearly about what you're trying to do because um, you're, you're getting a master's degree for this. So like teach other people as well, right? And then uh, visualize your ideas whenever possible. Um, it takes extra time for sure, but um, people don't like to read words. They like to look at what's gonna happen next. So um, I feel like that helps a lot in communicating effectively. And then other reflections, uh, yeah, manage expectations and work smart. If you have a scheduling conflict or limitation, do the next part of work first. Like for us, uh, brainstorming is supposed to happen later in the phase, but we, I mean, sorry, Dr. Fizek, but um, we have been doing that since the beginning of the project to like just essentially preserve some ideas. And then, um, yeah, friends, I met some of the most incredible people here. And uh, I hope all of you will have such an amazing experience in master degree as I did, because so far it's been nothing but wonderful. Uh, yeah, make your friends. They're going to be probably friends with you for your entire life. And I love my teammates. They're the best. And um, use resources and learn about, uh, learn about the process early on that I'm specifically talking about. Like if you need to make any experiments or try to assemble something, like if you go to Home Depot to buy a few things, like figure out this, uh, figure out a way to get that, to get the school to pay for it. <laughs> Yeah, figure it out earlier and um, yeah, you won't be able to, uh, I mean, you won't need to actually scramble around like we did uh, later on during the process. And then um, also another thing is think about the advantage of our current situation. Um, I don't know about everyone's location so far, but um, I did my first and second semester in China where there isn't necessarily that many COVID restrictions. Uh, and at the same time, there are a ton of it. So uh, personally, when I was doing this project, I have the advantage of being able to go to the hospital or go to like a trading center to learn about what a water pump is and like what kind of modifications you need to do in order to get that to Canada. Just a ton of this. And I, I enjoy running around so much for, for this project. I feel like it's the most fun uh, I've ever had in the school work honestly. Um, 
Yeah, so think about your current situation. We're all in the different parts of the world. And then like use that to your advantage. Hopefully we only go through this once a lifetime, right? And um, yeah, thank you. That would be the end of my thing. Thank you very much, Brent. Yes. I, I, I want to share actually with the students. Uh, I just want to flip. I want to show them up. Do you want to stop? Okay. I want to show them your report, if you don't mind. I'm not going to, I'm just going to flip through it just to get a sense. So this is a little bit different than perhaps what some of them are used to. Um, and it sort of shows the kind of the work. I, one of the things that was interesting about this project is you really, there was an engineering element and there was a human element at the same time in the project. Uh, and they spent a lot. So this is the report. And you know, there are 61 figures in this report, <laughs> which gives you a sense of sort of, because it was very, uh, uh, a lot of these are pictures, prototypes, there are some graphs, some data as well, uh, but uh, a lot of, there's, it's very visual at the same time, you guys were trying stuff out both on the human side and on the engineering side from early on. You went and just did stuff. And this is some of the data you collected for, for I guess, one, uh, one of the things, that, one of the uh, prototypes that you're working on. Um, and it just, stuff they kept looking at for, you know, the next 60 pages. <laughs> anyway, so that, 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 uh, I, I'll tell you, Brent, you, you were certainly, uh, your group was probably one of the most effective teams we've had. Uh, and that was pretty obvious from, from the beginning. I'd love to know what, why your team works more effectively than perhaps some others. I think we're all OCD about something. <laughs> that helps <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was, it was really, it was a lot of fun working with your group when we, when we did get a chance to work together. Um, questions, thoughts? This is just one project, one kind of project. I've got a couple more to show you as well. Uh, sorry, I see Reeb, you've got your hand up. Yeah, Brent, firstly, thank you for sharing your uh, presentation. That was awesome. And I was just, did you get a chance to implement or test out your idea in the hospital environment? And what was that kind of experience like? So that is probably the only regret that we have uh, given the current situation, but it's not as much as a regret. Like you, you go through this process and you learn what you learn from it, right? So um, I really hope we could go through like an actual hospital testing, but um, also apparently from the, uh, from the entire scope of the project, uh, that, will hope, uh, that will happen in the next term. So um, I think it's not our jobs actually. <laughs> Sorry. Any other comments, questions? Robert, it's Richard. Yes, Richard. Just a, just a quick just a quick question. Fabulous presentation and great lead up to it, uh, Robert and Salman. Thank you for organizing. Um, was this a project that involved um, two? professors, Robert, you were contributing on the design side and we actually had uh, Rashid, I think, supporting it too. So wasn't that a wonderful combination of skill sets, two faculty members shoulder to shoulder supporting students, right? Uh, yeah, and that's that was sort of the ideal setup in many ways. Uh, Rashid's, yeah. uh, he, was, he, he initiated the project. He had actually connected with the people at the hospital uh, on this project, and uh, and I provided sort of design thinking support when the students needed it. Uh, right, and that, that's that, a, real, that it's a be, really neat, so, really so neat yeah, thing, so, eh, Robert? Yeah, so students were, were were using the or taking advantage of Rashid's uh, technical expertise and experience, and taking advantage of my experience uh, on the design side of things. Right. Uh, what was the background of the students on your team, Brent? Do you, do you know? I'm sorry? What, what was the, uh, what, what uh, training or undergraduate background did your students have, did your, did your team, 
teammates have? Do you know? Um, so uh, we have an ME, a CE, and then electrical, and then biomedical. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So quite a range, actually. They're all, yeah. all engineers. I see that Nidhi has a question. Uh, yeah, uh, hi, Brent. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. so much for the presentation. It's really a great project. So um, it's a question like, uh, th did you guys come up with this project or was this an ongoing project? Uh, so we signed up for the project at the beginning of the term. It was a new project. Yeah, okay. new project. it was a brand new so, project. Uh, and a question uh, to you. Um, so like, um, do we select teammates uh, or when we, when we come up with a new idea for the project, how do we go about it? Just if say, for example, if a student has an uh, idea for the project, we'll go to the professor and we'll discuss that. And then what will happen? What will be the next step? I think from the perspective of a student, you would just show up at the interview hoping to meet the best people. And then it's up to the professor to assemble the right team. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Brent, I had a couple questions, if I may. Yes. Um, Brent, at one point in the presentation, you mentioned empathy. Um, yeah. why, why, why was empathy so important when at the end of the day, you're designing a machine? Um, well, uh, it's always different when you put your heart into it, when you do anything. So I feel like empathy is, I feel like empathy is a good foundation of designing something that's human centered and it shows in the details, if not the big picture that you really poured your heart and soul into it and did your research and had empathy for your users and have a final product that's Probably it takes a little bit longer than the other ones, but it's more perfect and well-rounded to a certain extent. How would you explain I, that to a, sorry, how would you explain that to uh, someone who's paying for the product? What, 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 what are you adding through uh, uh, empathy lens that makes the product more valuable? Uh, um, purely from the point of, a, uh, of value, um, I can try to explain that it's a lot more user-friendly and we have done our research and all of that. And then also that means you're going to spend a lot more time talking to your clients and putting them at the center of all the actions. So make it obvious. So they feel like they got their money's worth. I feel like it's, yeah, for me, I feel uh, that's my takeaway probably. Brent, at one point, uh, you also mentioned a phrase uh, that I really love. It said, or you, you said, uh, embrace the frustration. Uh, <laughs> what did you mean by that? <laughs> God. Uh, they're just, okay, so I, um, I spent the first two terms in China, and a lot of our meetings goes into the 4 a.m., 5 a.m. territory for me personally, and like, yeah. Like I can only spend so much money at Starbucks, you know? So like <laughs> if it's been going on for two hours and I have nothing to give, I'm just like, please end this meeting right now. I don't want to do this anymore. And then someone else asked a question and suddenly you get the idea. So I feel like it's not necessarily bad to have a frustrating situation because sometimes you have a spark and like that kind of turns the direction of an entire project. So like, yeah, deal with it, I guess. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Brent. Thank you. Amar. Hi. Hey, Brent, great work. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. Oh, you said something about insights that was really interesting. I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about that in the design thinking and human-centered design part. 
You said something about insights. I'd love to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, so insights. So uh, apologies beforehand because um, I've been having a vacation and then like traveling and all of that and jet lag. But um, insights, uh, what we learn from class is that it's derived from interviews and um, you dig deeper and ask questions and eventually get to an insight statement. And then you build from that and get to brainstorming stage. And then what comes next, you know? Um, what, what would you say is an insight, Brent? How would you define it? <laughs> it's quite challenging. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But when I, uh, but right now I can say that if I reach an insight, I know it's an insight. <laughs> but you'll find out in class. It's hard to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Fair enough. That's, fair, that's enough. fair, Brad. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you have another question, someone? No, Robert. This is this is good. Thank you. Amar. Yes. Oh, I already asked. I she put my hand down. Yeah. Okay. All right.